Let's talk about Raw. Had a lot to get into on this show last night. So it opens up with Seth Rollins coming out doing his goofy act, dancing around in his stupid outfit. People say he's supposed to be the Riddler. Is that what he's supposed to be? I think he's a freak. That's why he's freaking, right? Uh, Isn't that it? Well, anyway, he comes out and he calls out Cody Rhodes and golly, Rollins talked for like an hour. And the whole point was, I wasn't ready at WrestleMania. So tonight in the main event, I want you to face someone who you're not going to know who it is. So you're not ready. Cody says, okay. That was about 25 minutes right there. Long segment. Then we had Sasha and Naomi versus Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan for the women's tag team titles. Oh, and, let me uh, say it. You'll never guess what happened. A, well, you can say that all up and down the show. So there was a uh, kerfluffle, and Liv Morgan fell outside, and Rhea Ripley got double teamed and pinned. And as soon as she got pinned, I knew she was turning. So she gets pinned, and then she gets in a big argument with Liv Morgan, beats her up, lays her out with the riptide, stomps a mud hole in her. Rhea Ripley has turned heel. It's about time. Sonya Deville and Bianca segment. So Sonya Deville is facing her. She was supposed to be facing her at the pay-per-view. But Sonya comes out and says, you know what would be better than beating you for that title at the pay-per-view? What if I beat you in a very special place next week, Knoxville, Tennessee, your hometown? I will beat you for the women's title. And not only will I beat you, but your family can be there and watch you Lose another title quickly. So Bianca's all mad. She grabs her for the KOD. Sonya yells, put me down or you're going to be stripped and fined. And so Bianca tosses her down really hard and walks off. And so Sonya gets all angry. And she goes backstage and she's yelling at Adam Pierce, And she's all complaining that Bianca laid her hands on, like, management. Which, by the way, the storyline is so stupid. Like... Literally, for you, you like lunkheads out there, they have to explain this to you. So the story is, Sonya is a wrestler when she's in her gear. But if she's in her street clothes, she's management. So dumb. So anyway, Adam Pierce goes, well, don't worry about it. I, uh, I handled this, this fine. So Bianca walks up, and she's got one dollar, which she gives to Adam Pierce. That was her fine. I don't know where she found a dollar bill. My God, those things are so hard to come by nowadays. I had to find a dollar bill for Paisley's school pictures. I had to literally get my car, drive down to the grocery store, and, and it was brutal. But Break anyway, 100? Yeah, what, we feel really feel sorry for you. Bianca had a rough time. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. Veer Mahan and Jeff Brooks... Golly, how long do we have to wait for this idiot to debut? God bless him. And then he Ooh, finally he finally debuts, and now all he's doing is squashing blokes <laughs> like he's on main event. God. Well, yeah, but they didn't get the ambulance right on main event. I mean, give him that. At least, when's the last time we've seen the ambulance gimmick for somebody? The last old, the week. Old, they ought to give him the old Sid. Give him the Sid thing. Let him go out there with a gurney. Let him put the guy in a gurney, and let him push the gurney like off the ramp or something like that. Do that every week. So anyway, he killed this guy. No Rey Mysterio. I guess he's, you know. He, he knows uh, better. <laughs> he's getting Pat Buck's exit. <laughs> I mean, this isn't, like a, this isn't like a hard and fast rule, but you know there are people that, you know, have actually really serious, legitimate things like heart attacks, and then, you know, they're, they're home resting, you know, in, in a few days or whatever. But man, you put, you put Dominic in a cervical hold, he's hospitalized for weeks. <laughs> What happened to this guy's neck? Well, Did they have to take his brain out and then put it back in again. You got to be careful with the neck. We had the Ezekiel lie detector test. So uh, it's stupid. They have a lie detector. Yeah, Chad Gable was great, though. Yeah, Chad Gable's out there. Kevin Owens is out there. I mean, the funny thing is, like, Kevin Owens is great, was great in this segment, and Chad Gable was great in this segment. And even Ezekiel was fine in the segment. But at the end of the day, it was like a stupid segment. It was like, it took an hour to, for the guy to go, I'm Ezekiel. I'm not Elias. And the machine says he's telling the truth. And there's like an hour-long segment to lead to a match with Ezekiel and Chad Gable. Ezekiel's first ever match in storyline on Raw is his character. Three minutes, disqualification, Otis runs in. Ezekiel can't even get a win. I'm like, even... 
Veer Mahan can beat somebody. And by the way, Ezekiel's new catchphrase, I don't know what it is. But yes, in the interview, do. in the interview, he says, Who wants to hear Zeke speak? And then in the match, he screamed, Who wants Zeke to speak? He's like screwed it up. He had one line in the interview and then one line in the match. And I'm like, this, okay, so, you know what's funny? I'm going to tell you guys a story. Not a long story. But uh, they had this guy, Elias, and he played the guitar, which people liked. And he did interviews, which people liked. And he wrestled, which people didn't like. But there were two things he did that people liked. So they had an idea. Let's take those things away from this man. Let's take away his guitar. Let's take away his his uh, his beard. All everything, every aspect of his character. And they took him off TV, and he did an interview where he said, uh, he actually said, Elias is dead. Long live Elias. He should have said Ezekiel, but they didn't know what they were doing at the time. How do I know that? Well, so uh, for the last, how long has he been off TV? Can someone tell me how long he's been off TV? He's been off TV for a long time. Months. So, you know, various people have been tasked with the idea of coming up with an idea to repackage Elias. And, uh, you know, they came, all these people came up with all these ideas. And then this is what they settled on. He's his own brother. He shaved. And his catchphrase is, who wants to hear Zeke speak? And he has bad matches and he doesn't play the guitar. Maybe he'll have an interview segment called Zeke Speaks, though. And then, bro, can you shave your face completely, dude? It's like all 5 o'clock shadowed and weird now. <laughs> then we had the Street Profits against Randy Orton and Riddle. And uh, I, I, I don't know what's going on. I'm not going to bother. But uh, in a very heelish move, the Street Profits played the Usos' music to distract Riddle and Orton to then pin them and then brag about it. So they might be heels now. No. But I have no earthly idea as usual. No. So they got to win. So actually, it looks like it may be... Uh, RK Bro, the Usos, and maybe the Street Profits in a three-way to unify the titles, even though the Street Profits don't have titles. Because, hey, why not? Edge and Damian Priest. Uh, Edge, you know, talked for a long time in a room. At least he didn't say that he wants someone to knock on his door. But he is angry at the fans, because, as you're well aware, everybody, it's their fault. Then they beat up AJ Styles and laid him out. We had Theory versus Finn Balor, and... I, I, you know, I said, uh, you know, a while ago that Austin Theory is, you know, Vince's new John Cena, and I was ridiculed for that, but, God, did you guys watch this? It's Theory versus Finn Balor. Theory, like, you know, he looks like an action figure, but, and actually, he's not a bad worker, but they don't want him to work like that. So, it's a very generic heel match. He puts Finn Balor in a chin lock. They go to commercial. They come back. The guy's still in a chin lock. He gives him a neck breaker outside. He puts him back into a chin lock. Finn Balor gets a very basic comeback, gets cut off. Theory hits him with the ATL and wins. He wins the title. And he's the new champion. And they send out all these, you know, mid-card geeks, heels, like Aziz is out there and everybody. And they're all celebrating with Theory, and they put him on the shoulders, and he's doing this or whatever. And then they hit Vince's music, and Vince comes out on the ramp, and uh, and Theory goes up there, and you know Vince is holding his arm up, and they're taking selfies of each other. I'm like, God, this is so heavy-handed. It's so heavy-handed. This is the new chosen one. Look at this roster. Uh, look at developmental and the main roster. And I mean, think of think of all of the guys that have left to go to a double. Your Daniel Sins, your uh, they let go of Samoa Joe, and you know who else? We go on forever. Moxley's gone, and uh, uh, Andrade, Jeff Andrade, Hardy. the Jeff. Well, Jeff Hardy was pretty old, but well, that's yeah. You've got um, you know, there's just the list goes on and on and on. It's all they all these guys Ruby leaving, Solo, leaving, leaving. Yeah. But thank God we got Austin Theory. Like, nothing against the guy, but, I mean, there was nothing special about this match whatsoever. It wasn't good. It wasn't exciting. It was just there. But then he was coronated as, like, he's the new chosen one. 
This is like Vince. Uh, it's just and Vince by, McMahon, by dude. being a goofball, man. You go back to him and evolve, like throwing Darby Allen off of things, and it's like he was more serious doing that. He had more of an attitude doing that, and that's the biggest problem with this: is he's a goofy sidekick to Vince instead of being. At least Cena had attitude. You know, that was the part of the whole deal was the whole attitude thing of what was it, uh, ruthless aggression or whatever it is. With theory, it's a goofball who. Again, I don't know if this is really getting him off on the best start, even though he is standing there next to Vince, which is bizarre to say. Then we had the wedding, which uh, they didn't do our idea, which was Truth accidentally marrying the wrong pair. But we did have we did have, uh, you know, Truth go and uh, speak now or forever hold your peace. And Tamina spoke up. And first she switches the men. So now she's going to marry Reggie. Then she switches it so the men are together and the women are together. And they actually teased that uh, Dana and Tamina were going to kiss. And uh, R-Truth, you know, he cut it off because it's a PG show. These fans were furious. They wanted that kiss. So then everyone gets back together again. And the whole point of it was the 24-7 title is off limits during the ceremony. So, of course, the moment he announces, he didn't say they were married. He said they were now committed. (laughs) So the moment they're committed... Of course, uh, Reggie tries to pin... Actually, Reggie pins Brooke. Tamina pins Reggie. Tozawa pins Tamina. Dana pins Tozawa. And then Truth carries Dana to the back. But then Truth doesn't try to pin her. So, anyway. The less said, the better. It was exactly what you would expect. It was train wreck television. It was designed to be dumb. It was designed to be wacky. But the fans thought it was dumb and wacky, and so they just did chants and everything like that. And then Truth spent an hour trying to shut the fans down, but then they just kept doing it louder. I mean, this went on forever. But still, we got the rest of the show going on forever. So MVP and Omos are having an arm wrestling match next week. Can't wait for that one. Lashley. What did I say? Oh, MVP, yeah. MVP. Lashley and Omos are having an arm wrestling match. And then the main event, it's going to be uh, Cody against a mystery opponent. Fans have been waiting three hours. Rollins comes out and just goes, it's Kevin Owens. <laughs> Kevin Owens comes out. The match was good. They went, se- except the finish, of course. They go 17 minutes, and they're wrestling. They're doing all these spots. They're working hard. And then finally, Owens takes a bump on the apron. He falls off the apron. Seth on the outside says, get your fat ass back in the ring. Kevin Owens is like, what did you say? And he's he just can't take it. He just walks out, walks out, gets counted out. Hey. So Cody, another big Rhodes win via countout. <laughs> he's also upset about this. And uh, then he goes to pose. And there's like five seconds left on the show. He goes to pose. Seth sprints in, pushes him off the top. You don't even see Cody land. They do a quick shot of Cody. He's holding his ankle. Now just go, how do you start? And they go off the air. <laughs> I hit my time cue better than they did. I was reading this book about bats. The book explains that a bat cannot stand and then take off, okay? A bat can only fall from a great height and then fly. Gotcha. Sting is now a bat. He just goes up on something really high and he falls. He he did not jump through these tables. (laughs) He he fell. He fell. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.